Welcome to a candidate forum for Sacramento City Council District 5. The candidates in alpha order are Tamiko Heim and Katie Maple. This forum is sponsored by the League of Women Voters of Sacramento County and the Sacramento Metro Cable Television Commission. I'm Paula Lee, a member of the League of Women Voters, and I'll be the moderator for the forum. The League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan political organization of women and men. We work at all levels of government, local, state, and national, to encourage informed and active participation in government. The League does not support or oppose political candidates or political parties. Although we do not support uh, candidates or endorse candidates, we are a political organization. So we do, after careful study, take positions on ballot measures and legislation. You can find our positions on our website. And if you're interested in public policy or just want to support our volunteer work, we invite you to join us. The format for the forum this today will be as follows. Both speakers will have two minutes for an opening statement. They'll have one minute to answer the questions in rotating order. Finally, speakers will have one minute for a closing statement. The timer today is League Volunteer Claudia Bonsignore, and she'll give you 30 seconds. That little sign lets you know that you have 30 seconds left, and then she'll hold up that stop sign when your time is up. So we'll begin with an opening statement from Tamiko Heim. Tamiko? Thank you for inviting me today. I really appreciate the opportunity to express my love and dedication to this city. My name is Tamiko Heim. I am a Sacramento candidate for City Council, District 5. I was born and raised in Sacramento. I know this city. I love this city. My family has deep roots in this city. My family has prayed, loved, laughed, and played in this city. We own businesses, and my daughter even graduated high school in District 5. I've worked for the state of California for the last 20 years. I started as an account clerk, too, at the state of California and worked my way up to an infrastructure planning manager. I have volunteered in this city because I believe that volunteering and giving back to where you are from is important. I've worked with community leaders and all these different business owners. I've worked with organizations like Black Child Legacy Campaign. I've worked with Sacramento Women Achieving Greatness. I've, um, I even co-founded my neighborhood association and I was appointed in 2019 as your active transportation commissioner in District 5. Why am I running? When I saw the list, when I saw the new map for the city, I felt it was important that someone who knew the city and who could represent it well speak with the community and lead with the community. I've worked with the community leaders in this district and throughout the city, and I feel it's important for someone like me that have used some of the services through this city and for the government and through the government. I, be, I will continue to be the advocate for this city for programs like preschool, after school care, and libraries. Thank you for taking the time to understand and listen to me and know that I will continue to push forward and advocate for things that in our district that we need like public safety, connectivity, and economic inclusion. Thank you. Thank you, and now an opening statement from Katie Maple. Hi, thank you so much for having me here. Uh, my name's Katie Maple, I'm a candidate for Sacramento City Council in District 5, and I always start with my personal story. Uh, I was 16 years old when I left home, and I struggled in poverty for much of my life. Um, I slept in my car at times and was unhoused when I was a youth and put myself through school. I, I went to American River College uh, for many years and then eventually through uh, UC Davis where I got my degree in psychology. Um, those experiences, struggling in poverty, uh, being on my own and being unhoused have really shaped the way that I look at the world and are a passion and a driver for why I'm running. I think it's really important to acknowledge that there's a lot of systems that um, within our city, within our government that don't benefit those who are disadvantaged. And so that's where my passion and my drive comes from. Um, I didn't decide, I, ran, I decided to run for office when I, at the beginning of the pandemic. 
Uh, I was serving as the vice president of my neighborhood association, and I was a co-founder of a nonprofit called Sac Soup that provides direct aid to our most um, struggling residents, those who are living on our streets. Uh, and I was looking around me, and I was frustrated. I saw tents lining the streets of our, of our sidewalks. I saw suffering. I saw people struggling to make ends meet. I saw people displaced from their homes and the price of housing skyrocket. I looked around me and I thought, what are we doing? Uh, and so I decided to, to step up in that moment uh, because I have experience navigating government. After graduating from Davis, I worked in the state legislature uh, and I worked as an advocate. I have, I have years of success uh, getting things done at the state and the local level. And I'm looking forward to bringing the, that experience to District 5. I spent the last two years on the campaign trail talking to residents, small businesses, uh, community leaders, nonprofits, and our youth. And uh, the, the platform that we've recently announced, a new deal for District 5, is based on that feedback and includes thousands of new housing units for affordable housing, collaborative solutions to end homelessness, uh, supporting community organizations to reduce gun violence, and apprenticeship programs to bring high paying jobs to our community. Thank you. Okay, and now the questions will begin with you, Katie. City Measure L, which is going to be on the ballot, amends the city charter to allocate an amount of its general fund revenue equivalent to 40% of total revenue generated from cannabis business operations tax towards a children's fund. What are your views on Measure L? Yeah, so uh, some people may know this, but I actually worked in the cannabis industry for several years. Um, part of my job was to open up new uh, stores in other cities, not in Sacramento, but around California. And one of the things that I know from that industry is when it's one of the last places that cities can get new forms of revenue to do things like support their parks, support businesses, uh, you know, make sure the streets are, are paved. Um, but also that those businesses really do want to help the community. Um, and so I am very supportive of Measure L. I think that we need to create a fund to invest in our youth um, because that's, they are our future. And so I'm supportive of this measure, and I, I hope to see that pass and support our city in the future. Tamiko? Measure L is important to me. As a mother who raised her child here in Sacramento, if there were no after-school programs, if there was no full daycare, there... I don't know where I would be, honestly. I wouldn't be able to work. I wouldn't have been able to, my daughter wouldn't have graduated from her master's program this past May. Um, so I am supporting Measure L because I want in children to have the same benefits that I had, the same benefits that my daughter had in this here community, Sacramento. I've volunteered for some of these programs, and I believe it is very important to give children something to do, something to look forward to, and also the skills to, to have the next job or career that they are looking for. Tamiko, solutions to the growing unhoused population seem unattainable. How can Sacramento accomplish more to shelter and house homeless individuals and clean up our street? You know, as one, these are one of the things that um, committee members are asking about when you knock on their doors. And we have to work together with the, com with the county to provide services. And I'm happy to have some endorsements by two of the county members that border our, to border our district so that we can talk and work together to get more people off the street, to get them training, to get them casework, case managers. These are some of the things that would help us move them forward. Um, things that I also want to look at is how they're dying and maybe work backwards from that. It is truly important to work with our partners, not just county, but also business and nonprofits to ensure that we are actually putting our best forward, foot forward as we commit work with the community. Katie? Yeah, so there's no doubt in my mind that homelessness is the number one issue uh, that, that are not only impacting residents of District 5, but members all over Sacramento, the region. Um, and, you know, I have years of experience working in this field, not only having lived experience on the street, but also running a nonprofit related to homelessness. Um, and what I believe is that we don't have to recreate the wheel as a city. Uh, I, all we have to do is look around us and see who's having success. And so I would love to model after a program that already exists. It's called the Sutter Yuba 
Homeless Consortium. It, it's just to the north of us, and it consists of two cities, or I'm sorry, two counties, five cities, school districts, nonprofits, and small businesses. And what they've done is two really important things. One, they've created a five-year strategic action plan. So they're working backwards from goal. How many people are we trying to serve? What do they need? We need help, do they need health and human services, addiction services, housing? And then the second important thing they do is they pull all their funds together. So they're able to use an economy of scale to address the problem at health. So that's what we need to see here. We need a regional solution that involves our city and our county at a minimum, if not uh, a, greater, uh, a greater mix of those things. Thank you. <clears throat> on the same subject, Katie, what are your views on Sacramento's Measure O, which will also be on the ballot, Emergency Shelter and Enforcement Act is its name. Yes, so um, I was actually just at a forum last night watching uh, two council members have a discussion about Measure O. Um, I am not supporting Measure O. And the reason why is that it, it does nothing to actually solve the crisis before us. The solution that I outlined just a minute ago, that's the solution in my mind. Um, Basically, what Measure O does is it doesn't even create, it doesn't create shelter beds, it doesn't create housing, which we desperately need, it doesn't have addiction services, it doesn't have actually any services for people, because we know that that's a responsibility of the county. It also uh, has a provision that says if there is not a formal partnership between the city and the county, uh, that, that nothing moves forward on that end. And so I have a hard time uh, voting for something and encouraging people to vote for something that they don't even know what they're voting on yet. Um, it also does nothing to actually solve the crisis. And last Lastly, I'll just point out that we know that we're headed for um, hard economic times at the city. The city managers made it clear that there's not enough money to do to continue on and do more than what we're doing. We need a partnership with the county, and that's the only way we're going to get this done. So I don't support the measure, but I do support collaborative solutions. Tamiko? Hi. So I am actually going to go ahead and support Measure O because I believe, and actually support the measure being on the ballot. I believe that the community wants a, wants to answer themselves on how they want to see this moving forward. Um, there, we have a process of voting, and that's the best way to do it. So as we move forward and working with the community, working with the county, and working with business partners and the community, I hope to see how the community tells us what they want us to do. Tamiko, separate from homelessness, there is a lack of affordable housing in our city, and it's at crisis levels. What are your strategies to address this? Some of my strategies to address this is basically build, 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 build. <laughs> Um, the best way to do this is to continue to build. Um, as you know, within the city, we've had um, building moratoriums and different things that stopped us from building. We need to build and think of creative ways to house individuals. I always talk about my first purchase, and that was a number one unit in a fourplex. We need to be, think about how housing looks to different people and how to push forward to make sure that we have the availability for individuals to purchase, to rent, and to do whatever they need to do in this city. Katie? Yeah, so um, housing affordability and, and supply is, a, is the number one issue on my platform because it's the number one thing that I'm hearing from the community as I knock on their doors. In District 5, a huge percentage of the population is rent burdened, so they're paying 30% or more of their income on rent or their mortgage, and that means that they have less money to spend on things like gas in their car, food on the table for their families, child care, and all the other things that are, that are cr crushing them under the weight of... Uh, uh, under that struggle. And so for me, um, we need to not only build, I agree that we need to build supply, but we also need to really focus on affordable and low income housing. So I recently met with uh, an affordable housing developer and asked them, what should we do? How do we do this? Uh, and one thing that they mentioned to me is that the city can make it easier for these affordable housing developers to get the permitting they need to actually open these units. We, we need to act quickly. So that means streamlining the process at the city level, making sure it's easy to build, and then also working with our state and federal partners to ensure that we have the funding to do this. At the end of the day, there's not enough money uh, currently, but I hope to work to get it. Thank you. Katie, new research examines law enforcement stops and the use of force and misconduct, racial disparities in police interactions. What will you do to address this? 
Yeah, so this is another key component of, of my platform and you know my passion. Uh, I live in a, a community called Oak Park. One of the one of the things, the key things that I've heard from residents over the last two years, um, t knocking on doors and talking to them, is that there is a fraught relationship at times between law enforcement and the community. And I think the only way that we move forward as a community and build that relationship back is by heeding the recommendations of our police review commission. It's a commission that we've had for years at the city level. It's filled with experts and people who have spent years in t of their life putting together these recommendations, talking to experts, and really we've only taken a couple of those and implemented those in the department. So I would love to see uh, diversity in the hiring process, making sure that we're actually hiring people from the communities that they're serving, really taking a look at our use of force policies, ensuring that there's accountability in the police force so that people can start to rebuild that trust. And I think that that's, we're able to do that, but we can only do that by building uh, measures for accountability. Tamiko? I believe in accountability and working collaboratively. Um, born, being born and raised in Sacramento and, and a black woman, I know how different um, interactions can be with police. But I believe because I not only have family members that were in law enforcement and I also have family members that were on the other side, I believe that I can be that br bridge that bridges that gap in that healing. It is very important to have accountability, but it's also important to work with our communi community partners to ensure that we are dealing with not only the accountability, but the healing that needs to be done in this city. Um, so I look forward to working with both the police department and the community partners that are at the table and want to work together to bring the healing and the accountability needed in this city. Tamiko, on this same subject, a, a similar question, um, so you may be able to expand, expound on it. Police policies and practices have been at the forefront of public discussion and review in recent years. How do you define public safety and what may need to change, if anything, to build that trust that law enforcement will serve all communities more equitably? I think one of the one 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 component to building trust is working with community partners. And the best way, the best example I can give you is I was a volunteer for Black Child Legacy Campaign. And as that program launched, we did work with police officers. And what they did was, at times, referred individuals to us. If there was an issue, if there was um, someone who needed a, a place to stay, if there was someone who needed pampers, diapers, because of a small incident in the store, they referred them to Black Child Legacy Campaign, and we were able to be that bridge to assist that individual. So working with the community members, working with the police to build on that trust and continue the healing. Katie? Yeah, so to me, public safety means that everybody is kept safe, no matter what you look like, no matter where you live, no matter your income, no matter anything. And we see that there are disparities. We see there are disparities based on your zip code. We see that there are disparities based on your skin color. And we see that there are disparities based on your income. And so to me, I think we needed to bifurcate this. I think law enforcement is incredible at, at responding to crime. And that's really their role. And they should be resourced to do that. But I really also believe that we need to be uh, intentional about prevention. And prevention, to me, means investing in youth programs it means ensuring that we're using data when we're looking at law when we're looking at public safety and law enforcement for example if 20 percent of our calls for service are for mental health related or homeless related calls then maybe we need to make sure that we have enough you know social services social service workers and others to respond to those calls that have that proficiency so that we're not necessarily sending out someone with a badge and a gun to every call this is not only more cost effective we've seen this in other cities i think it will lead to more equitable outcomes overall in terms of public safety Tamiko? Oh, I just. Oh, you just <laughs> answered that, yes. Okay, Katie, how do we improve? Notice that when you s answered the last question, you're first, next, you're up next. <laughs> Katie, how do we improve the livability among neighborhoods, particularly those that struggle with unemployment, lack of affordable housing, access to health care, and concentration of law enforcement engagement? 
Yeah, so that, those are all key components of, of my platform because this, this is the story of District 5. District 5 struggles in many ways. District 5 is struggling under poverty in many communities. There are, a lot of, there are many neighborhoods where people aren't making, on average, less than $20,000 a year. There are many communities uh, in District 5 where they do not have equitable access to services, including parks. Um, we see that the, you know, if you go you know, to one of the more resource neighborhoods and look at a park and, and go to, for example, Woodbine in District 5, you'll see that there's a, there's a big disparity in terms of tree canopy and grass and all, and, uh, all these other things. And so for me, it's all about lifting the community up, listening to them, seeing what they need, but also bringing resources back to the community, right? Looking and seeing where are the places that we're not, haven't invested our resources over many years, and how do we bring that back and ensure that everybody's at the table? So that's at the key of, of my platform. That's why we're fighting for more affordable housing. That's why we're fighting for resources for our parks and so on, and so I'm eager to do that. Tamiko. Infrastructure is key. Um, I being a mother, you know, I would have to drive my daughter to a family member's house in order to get on a bus to go downtown to work because it was too expensive to pay for parking. Infrastructure is key, not, not just housing, but walkability, bikeability, transit, um, cars. It, it is very key that we look at how our district and our city is developed in laid out. And in order to continue to do that, we need to focus on how do we get the infrastructure better for our community, for our neighbors, and by doing that, that would get them jobs and increase their pocket size to, so that they can stay in the district. Tamiko, small businesses and innovation are drivers of the economy. How does Sacramento support small business and generate innovation? You know, I have quite a few family members that own businesses in Sacramento, and the way um, they have been supported is truly by the community that they are in, um, not just um, their neighbors, their friends, or their family, but also some of the chambers. Um, Having working PBIDs or chambers pull together to work and enhance these community, these small mom and pop stores are key to continue to, continue to move business forward. And if we do not continue that, some of these jobs will be lost. So continuing to um, uplift the community members who have small businesses, bring creative ways um, to change how they sell their items in their store um, and partner with chambers um, to increase that is key. Um, I've been lucky to be endorsed by Metro Chamber and Hispanic Chamber, so I will continue to partner with them. Thank you. Katie? Yeah, um, so I'm a small business owner myself, uh, and then before that, I have worked in business for, for several years. And so for me, one of the key things that I did as I started this campaign was made sure that I went and I talked to small businesses. I walked all around the district, I met with them one on one, and I said, what do you need and how can I help? So one of the things that I found in that process is that it is very difficult to navigate the city's planning and building department and the permitting process. And a lot of small business owners who haven't had the opportunity to do this before really struggle in that. It's not only um, cumbersome to go through that process, but it's also expensive. So I think it's really important for the city, if we're invested in supporting small businesses, which I am, that we ensure that we make the process easy to navigate, that we remove barriers that don't need to be there, and that we incentivize people to start small business. I'm also really interested in, District 5 is such a diverse place. There's so many different neighborhoods, communities, and I would love to see building out cultural hubs throughout the district. And I think that involves making sure that we have quality public transit that goes from the urban core to the outer areas of the district to make that happen. Katie, Sacramento continues to experience gun violence on our streets. What can be done to prevent more of these tragedies? Yeah, so that's another uh, that's another area of particular focus because of the community where I live in Oak Park. Um, we actually just recently experienced another homicide. It was the fourth in three days, I believe. Um, and so it's our community struggles with gun violence. And so again, knowing that you know, I just have my perspective. I think it's really important to always 
gather the expertise from the community and people who do the work on the ground every single day. And so I've met with nonprofits and community leaders over the last two years, and what I've heard from them is that we need to be investing in community-based organizations that do this work every day. That means investing in our youth, ensuring that there are youth uh, um, after-school programs, ensuring that there are opportunity, opportunities for young people to get involved and to get off the streets during certain time periods that we know are heated times, but also addressing poverty is a key component of this. A lot of crimes that happen in the city, uh, in our region, are crimes of poverty. And so we have to ensure that people have access to quality jobs so that they're able to put food on the table for their families and so that they're not resorting to crime in order to, to get by. Thank you. Tamiko? Gun violence is a problem in our city, and especially in our district. I've worked with programs and had shown and had success in working with programs like Black Child Legacy to stop some stop third party homicide. We have to continue to be vigilant. We have to walk the streets like I do every Thursday with the Oak Park Peace Walk. We have to meet with our community leaders, our community members, our pastors. We have to continue to push the needle when it comes to um, gun violence and ensure that we are in their face with the love on the streets. We have to invest in preventative measures. Kids are the future. We have to continue to invest in programs, make them busy. If they're not, bu if they're busy, there's, they, they can't get into trouble. So I am very confident that I can be an asset in this field because I have been there. I have worked with these nonprofits and these community leaders. Thank you. Tamiko, our county ballot and the voters we'll see measure A, the transportation tax that includes a 40 year half cent sales tax increase to raise millions for transportation and transit projects. Should measure A be adopted, why or why not? So this is a tough one for me because I know the way the city looks and the infrastructure on the street right now. Um, as I mentioned earlier, it is very hard to get around the city it is hard to get around the city on transit, and it's hard to get around the city if you're walking and biking. And it's hard to get around the city in a car. Our infrastructure just was not set up for as many people as we have today. We have to continue to look at different ways to continue to push the needle and make sure that our city fits for how we need to work today. I am happy to see that we have this measure on the ballot, and, let, and I want to hear what the community has to say. I want to see the community give you that answer to tell you what they want. Katie? Yeah, so uh, just to be frank, Measure A is one that I, I'm still learning about and getting educated, um, but I'll, I'll go through my list of pros and cons with you on Measure A. One, we know that we desperately need to, to improve our infrastructure as a city. We need to build roads, we, or we need to make sure that our roads are, don't have potholes. We need to make sure that we have public transit, quality public transit, and that's a key component of my platform is you know, making sure that we have light rail and bus systems and everything that we need to get people from A to B without an over-reliance on cars, which then brings me to my current concern on the measure and one of the major projects that measure a is supposed to fund um, is is a freeway project and I'm very focused on climate change I'm really focused on making sure that we have a future for our children and really reducing uh, vehicle miles traveled overall is a goal at the state level and the local level and so I have concerns about measure a but I also recognize that you know if we have strong leaders that are a part of SAC RT and are able to ha give direction on future projects we're desperately going to need a source of revenue to do that um, um, and so again, you know, I, I, I think that people should weigh this carefully, as am I. Okay, well, this is the last question before your closing statements. Katie, what will you do to bring, no, what do you bring to the Sacramento City Council? And how will you work effectively with your fellow or sister city council members? Yeah, I think I bring a few things. One, lived experience. Um, you know, one of the biggest issues that's facing Sacramento right now is homelessness. I know because I've knocked on thousands of doors and that's what I hear. So having lived experience on the streets as well as working day to day with folks on the streets has shown me uh, that I can bring that perspective to the, to the city hall as well as experience navigating government. As I mentioned before, I worked in the state legislature. I worked as an advocate um, and I got things done, big things, including uh, passing laws 
laws like banning cosmetic, uh, animal testing on cosmetic products. That's only done by working together with a lot of people that you don't always necessarily agree with. That is my philosophy fundamentally, is that we all need to work together, we need to build consensus, and we need to get things done that are gonna better the lives of people in Sacramento, and that's gonna be my number one goal uh, and what I bring to the table. Tamiko? I bring 20 years of experience working in government. Not only did I work in government, I worked in, po not the things I worked in government, I worked in policy, I worked in budgets, I worked in accounting, I worked in human infrastructure planning, I worked in human resources, I can run an office. I've also worked on these streets. I've worked with community leaders, community, I've worked with the community, I've worked with pastors, I worked in this city, and I know this city. I will also be your own, the third black woman in this city's history to sit on that dais. It is important that you know that I bring Sacramento and I represent it well, because I am homegrown and I know this city. Thank you, okay, it's time for closing statements and we begin with Tamiko, you have one minute. Okay, well, first off, I'd like to thank you all for allowing me to speak today. Um, city Council is important to me and is important to my community. I have been running this race for not long, but I know this city. I have been building up to running this race this my whole life. I've worked with women in regards to knowing their power and owning their power. I've worked with kids. I've worked with this city. I want to continue all these things that I've helped other people do, do for myself and work with you. I'm a community member, I'm a community leader, and I would love to bring the community with me to City Hall. Please allow me the opportunity to represent you and to rep this, represent this city well. Thank you. Katie? Yeah, um, I just want to say thank you so much for the opportunity. I know uh, being involved in government and being involved in your democratic process is so important, especially at a time where democracy is under attack all over the nation. We need people to get involved, to learn about their candidates, and to want to participate in this process. So thank you for those who are watching. Um, you know, I've been on the campaign trail for two years because I knew that it was going to take me at least that much time to talk with people, to talk with residents, to talk with small business owners, nonprofits, and leaders all throughout this community to make sure that I understand the issues because this isn't about me this is about everyone it's about it's about the people that are struggling to get by in district 5 which is why we put together a platform that involves fighting for thousands of units of affordable housing making sure that we collaborate on real solutions to end homelessness because we know that that's impacting everybody in this district partnering with community organizations to reduce gun violence and bringing those apprenticeship programs to bring quality union jobs to district 5 and I would be honored to earn your vote thank you well, that concludes our forum, and I want to thank both of you for running for office and for being here today to answer these questions for voters that we hope we'll, we can spread. I also want to thank Claudia Bonsignor, the timer, our volunteer league timer, and the Sacramento Metro Cable Television Commission, and for voters. Ballots are gonna go out October 10th. So if you've moved or you've changed your signature, the last day to re register or re-register is October 24th. And you can do it really easily online at registertovote.ca.gov. Once you get your ballot, you can mail it or you can put it in a secure drop box at a county library or you can vote in person at a vote center. The Dropbox locations and the vote center locations will all be listed in the information that comes with your ballot. And you can find nonpartisan voter information on the candidates that are on your ballot and the propositions and the local ballot measures at votersedge.org. Now, you are a much more informed voter if you've watched this discussion among these candidates for Sacramento City Council District 5. So you'll, we hope that you'll pass on what you learned today. And a YouTube link for this forum will be available on the website for the League of Women Voters. 
It's lwvsacramento.org. Thank you and good afternoon.